All right, now let's talk about turns around a point. A turn around a point is when the airplane is flown in two or more complete circles of uniform radii from a prominent ground reference point using a maximum bank angle of 45 degrees while maintaining a constant altitude, right? Uh, this teaches the pilot to maintain a relationship be the, between the plane and the ground uh, and adjust bank to correct for changing ground speed in order to maintain a constant radius. Uh, we want to learn how to establish wind correction to maintain track, so we'll be fighting our wind, and learn how to compensate for drift in changing orientations. We need to develop further awareness that the radius of a turn is correlated to the bank angle. We'll talk about the purpose, selecting an altitude and reference, the basics, and performing turns around a point. Now, the main purpose of a turn around a point is to maintain a specific relationship between the airplane and the ground. We need to learn how to divide our attention between the flight path, ground references, the flight controls, and scanning outside and instrument conditions. Uh, remember that 90-10 that rule. 90% of your time should be up and out looking for other, uh, other traffic and terrain, while 10% of your time should be inside the cockpit looking at your controls, or looking at your instruments. We need to learn how to adjust our bank angle to correct for ground speed changes and to maintain constant radius turns. Uh, remember, we need to improve co uh, competency in managing quickly changing bank angles, uh, establish and correct the wind correction angle to maintain track over the ground, and compensate for drift in changing orientations. Also develop further awareness that the radius of the turn is correlated to the bank angle. Now, we want to select an entry altitude like before. This is a ground reference maneuver. So uh, I like to do it at 1,000 feet above the ground, but the ACS, I believe, says between eight and 1,200 feet. I like 1,000 because that's the traffic pattern altitude. Uh, like before, we want to select an, uh, a reference point. Uh, in this case, we can use you know a small hill, a little house, uh, Wow, that's terrible. Uh, a barn, right? Whatever. A, a group of houses, whatever you want to look for, you need to select a reference point on the ground. This is what it looks like. If this is our reference point here, our little uh, tree, uh, we're going to enter on the downwind right here, uh, enter a steep turn. And, and again, the entire time we're dealing with changing wind direction uh, and bank angle. Uh, consecutive constant radius 360 degree turns where bank, rate of turn, and wind correction angle are constantly adjusted due to the wind's effect and different points of the turn, at different points of the turn. So if we're downwind and we need to execute this turn here, we're going to enter a steep turn uh, and then roll out at a shallower bank when we are um, a crosswind, essentially. And then once we are nose into the wind or upwind, our wings, wings are practically going to be level because we're not really fighting that wind anymore. And then we're going to uh, enter a turn and steepen it as we get uh, essentially, again, crosswind or base. Uh, let's see. Yeah, our roll rate, bank angle, and wind correction angle are constantly changing. Uh, so just keep in mind that um, you need to be looking out your window. Again, 90% of your time is outside of the aircraft. If this is our reference point and this is your wing, uh, we want to maintain where that uh, object is outside of our aircraft. And we're going to look, uh, again, up and out, but then double check with our instruments that we are staying coordinated, that we are maintaining our altitude and, uh, and uh, correcting for our wind correctly. And like we said, a coordination is very important, uh, especially in ground reference maneuvers. Since we are so close to the ground, if we stall uh, in an uncoordinated fashion, we could enter a spin, and uh, the ground will win in that case. Like we said, bef like we said before, 90% of your time is outside, 10% is inside the aircraft. Now, prior to entry, what do we do? Just like every other maneuver, we're going to execute our clearing turns. And you're going to make a either a th full 360 or turn left, clear the airspace, turn right, clear the airspace, and then uh, you're good to go. And you might uh, create a checklist to uh, complete this maneuver, uh, or you can do it from memory. Select your reference point, enter on the downwind. Quick question, how might you know where the wind is coming from? There are a couple of different ways you can do that. You can listen to the local ATIS or ADO, uh, ASOS or AWOS, uh, or you can look you know, for factories that have smoke uh, or steam coming out of them. Uh, if, if you see that, you know that the wind's coming from, you know, where we're looking here, left or right. So you can use that to help you uh, gauge where the wind is coming from. You want to enter on the downwind, enter that nice steep bank, uh, and then shallow it up as you complete the turn. Um, yeah. Let's talk about crabbing. Progressively crab inside the turn to establish max wind correction angle at the 90 degree point. 
uh, and then decrease from uh, 90 to, uh, to the uh, 180 degree point. Uh, the 180 degree point, this is when your bank should be at its lowest or practically you know, nose into the wind. Uh, so we really shouldn't be fighting the wind at all. It's just slowing us down at that point. That's right here. Now, on the second half of the turn, uh, we're going to, again, crab outside the turn to uh, a, a maximum crab angle at the 90 degree point here. And then at the 360 degree point, once we've completed the turn, the bank is at its highest with the crab removed and then exit uh, after two turns. So we're gonna do this twice and demonstrate that we can account for this wind uh, twice. All right, that wraps it up for this week. Um, really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Uh, I see that you guys are sticking with the course. I'm really happy to see that. This week, go knock out modules 501 through 503. Keep quizzing yourself. This right here is key. If you can test yourself Every day, uh, you'll, you're going to set yourself up for success on the actual exam. And as always, I would love to hear some feedback. If you find these to be helpful, great. If you find them to be boring as hell, tell me because I don't want to be wasting your time. So give me some feedback. If I need to slow down, I probably, probably should slow down. If I need to slow down, let me know. Uh, and if there's anything else that you can think of that uh, I can do to help you earn your wings, please do not hesitate to tell me. Either drop it in the comments on YouTube, uh, DM me on Discord, shoot me a message through the, uh, through the website, uh, and, I'll, and I really appreciate it, and I'll do anything I can uh, in my power to help you earn your wings. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week.